Why don't you tell me about uh, your uh, history with pizza? My history with pizza? Well, I, I suppose my history with pizza isn't much different from most people's history with pizza. I like it a lot. I grew up eating, you know, pizza is a universally loved food. I wanted to determine what was a good crust, how to make a good crust, and how various people define what goes into the perfect pizza crust. To do so, I talked with various people about their views on the crust as well as researching the various components of it. I prepared four distinct pizza recipes and gained insight from both the testers' reactions and from the production process. Finally, I visited Brick Oven Pizza owner and pizza extraordinaire, Walter Briggs, in his opinion. Uh, I think the crust is more important. I mean, as just as a, uh, it's the, it, there are lots of different things that I can put on top of the pizza that still make it taste good, and I do spend a lot of time prepping before I cook the pizza, but the con, the, uh, you gotta have that, you know, the crust is really what sort of defines the style of the pizza to me. For my first recipe, I prepared a pizza from home cook and celebrity chef Arne Garza. This pizza was distinct in that it used honey as fuel for yeast and also doubled the amount of yeast resulting in half the necessary proofing time. In preparation of the pizza dough, I found the crust somewhat hard to work with and with a consistency of old Play-Doh. However, to see how the pizza actually turned out, I'd have to wait for the evaluation from my testers. For the sake of control, all pizzas used pizza sauce, mozzarella cheese, and parmesan as topping. Save for the last pizza, all pizzas were prepared on a pizza stone in a 500 degree oven. Perhaps the biggest difference among pizza recipes was the usage of the different varieties of flour. As we wait for our pizzas to be tested, we check back in with Walter Briggs on his opinion on flour. Um, experiment with lots of different flowers. Uh, the, my sort of standard basic flower is a caputo, it's an Italian double zero flower. It's a traditional Italian pizza flower. Double zero is, uh, an indication of how finely ground the grain is, so it's very, uh, very silky and um, I, so I either use all of all double zero or sometimes um, sometimes I will mix it with some bread flour or some other high gluten. In Italy flour is graded not by protein content as it is in the US but by fineness so Italian double zero flour is the finest flour available. For this recipe, I used a mixture of all-purpose flour, which has medium protein content, and cake flour, which has very low protein content. The mixture of flours created a pizza that was both tender and crisp, an imitation of pizzas cooked in a wood-burning oven. In addition, the softness of the cake flour made the dough quite easy to work with. Despite the differences in flour composition, all the pizza doughs were prepared in a stand mixer. This appliance allowed for the doughs to be mixed and kneaded thoroughly without the use of any additional equipment. While not as easy or convenient, I found that it is possible to hand knead these pizzas or make them in a food processor fitted with a dough blade. The third pizza crust was a recipe that I was familiar with. The recipe called for exclusively bread flour, high protein flour that is typically used in bread. The high protein allowed the pizza to be very stretchy and with a nice crunch to it. So stretchy, in fact, that I might have made the pizza a little too thin. 
Many of these pizzas, the present one included, served as an adaptation from a hot wood burning oven. This was important for me because I wanted to be able to create these pizzas from the comfort of my own home. Because dough reacts differently at different temperatures, the recipes I used were not transferable to a brick oven. Pizza style that I like, you need to uh, you need to cook at eight or nine hundred degrees. The last pizza I prepared was perhaps most distinct, as it was a Chicago style deep dish pizza. I had virtually no experience working with this dough, and it had several unique features in its recipe. First of all, for the liquid in the dough, it used skim milk as opposed to oil and water that was common with the other recipes. Secondly, the pizza was not prepared on a pizza stone, but rather in a pie dish in the oven. Finally, from an aesthetic point of view, the pizza was much thicker and much heavier than the previous pizzas that I had experimented with. This deep dish pie was very different in both thickness and content than the other pizza. Out of the ovens, pizzas were very different from sort of the run of the mill. To, there's sort of two of run-of-the-mill styles that I think you find the thin, um, floppy cheese pizzas that are sort of New York style, and then there's the house of pizza pizza, the Greek house of pizza style pizzas, and these were eye-openingly different. The, uh, they're uh, American. Napolitano style uh, with like this crispy charred crust baked in really hot ovens um, and treated as you know as a gourmet food rather than a fast food. I like the initial crunch. The first crunch is good. Um, I think my preference as though I prefer less doughy on the top. I think that the flavor is good, but I think um, it's a little bit dry and thick. And in your mouth, it, it's, it's very dry, and I almost feel like I need a glass of water with it. But the flavor is good, and I like the thickness of it. I always like thick pizza, and I think the flavoring is really good. So for me, it's not tasting all that much like the pizza crust, it kind of has a very bready quality to it. You kind of have the first bite, which is very crackery, but then um, once you kind of descend into it, it very much has a kind of bread quality to it, if you will. Um, but the, it is standing up quite well. Hard. It's not as, it's, it has, it's interesting, it has the same, in some ways, the same thickness as the first one, but it's not as dense. But, uh, the air bubbles are smaller. The last one had big air bubbles. I think this one is much thinner, um, much crispier, and in fact, much better. Um, it's the perfect pizza crust. The right crispiness, the right density. It's delicious. Um, well, I think it has a very nice chew to it, a nice uh, initial crackiness to it when you bite into it. It's not plagued by the same problems as the other one. It doesn't have that kind of dense texture. Um, it doesn't hold up quite as well as the other one, I'd say. There's a little, little, little bit of droopiness, but I think that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make for a very thin crust. Perfect. I like thin crusts like this. The crust, the bottom of the crust has been able to withstand the penetration of the topping. So it's got a nice bottom, but I like that it's, it doesn't bother me if it's not solid firm like the first one. Well, this one you can really taste the flavors of the sauce and the cheese, which is nice. But personally, I think it may be a little too thin for me. Deep dish. 
Chicago style pie. From what I've heard, I'm supposed to eat it with a fork and knife, but that's not really my thing. First of all, we can see that thick crust is able to hold up quite a bit of topping. It's apparent the difference it is between this and you know the regular style of pizza. It does have that nice pizza crunch to it. There's a little bit of breadiness in the crust that I generally am not fond of, but it does serve the purpose of supporting a large amount of toppings. I have the feeling that I could have probably put mounds and mounds of more cheese and tomatoes and what else, and it would have still supported it. But the crust is by no means perfect. 